Hi, this has blew my mind and I'm sure you haven't probably seen this before because in this video we are going to talk about a cutting edge voice agent technology that is not just cheapest but also open source. That means you will be able to actually run it in your local system and even better than that you would be able to fine tune it as you need it so without much further ado let's go to the tutorial and you know what even before we go to the tutorial let me actually show you the demo how fast and incredible this voice ai agent system is and then i'm going to take you through the tutorial so shall we go to the screen so here is our ai agent sitting for dr donuts drive through and let's see how that works thank you for calling dr donut how can i help you today Hey, I want to uh, put on donuts order. I'd be happy to take your donut order. What kind of donuts are you looking to get today? We have a lot of great flavors to choose from. Just uh, give me some. You'd like to order some donuts, but you're not sure which kind yet. Can you tell me how many donuts you're looking for? And I can give you a few suggestions. Um, roughly around three donuts. So you'd like to order three donuts. Which kind would you like? We have a variety of flavors like our pumpkin spice ice donut or our chocolate ice donut, for example. Do you have anything special? We actually have a few seasonal items right now. Our pumpkin spice ice donut and pumpkin spice cake donut are really popular this time of year. We also have a pumpkin spice coffee and pumpkin spice latte if you're looking for a drink to go with your donuts. Would you like to try one of those? Yeah, sure. Let's uh, order the pumpkin spice, whatever you said. So I've got you down for three pumpkin spice ice donuts. That's a total of 329. Would you like to add a drink to that order? Maybe a pumpkin spice coffee to go with your donuts? No, I don't like pumpkin style drinks. Maybe just add a common latte. I'll add a latte to your order. So to recap, you've got three pumpkin spice ice donuts and a latte. The total comes out to be $3.87 for the donuts and $3.49 for the latte. So that's a total of $7.36. I'll have that ready for you. Please pull up to the drive through window. Great to see you there. My pleasure. I'll see you at the window. So did you see how fast the response was for that particular demo? This is one of the open source project and this is really really so cool although i am using their hosted model which is again very very cheap and i'm going to talk about that later but before i proceed to the video i must give shout out to one of the member in our community gurinder who have actually brought my notice to this particular project and thank you for that and again if you haven't joined to our community click the link below and come and join our community for free and let me know what interesting project that you see and you want to build i'm all ears and again if you are coming first time to the channel make sure you subscribe to the channel because i generally bring a lot of these cutting edge technologies about ai voice agents and SaaS in this particular channel and i'm starting to code all of my projects into one pager as i have already shared a video previously in the channel now without getting more into this let me focus into this particular tutorial so in a normal voice ai agent system what happens is there is a voice pipeline that works right so that means when a user speaks there is a speech to text system which will translate the speech into text that goes into ai llm processing and whatever response that comes out from ai that actually gets into a tts model or text to speech model like 11 labs and then that particular uh, you know audio is being played out this is the standard approach but this has a couple of issues for example it can introduce latency if if not uh, done well like with WebRTC protocol that i have covered before in the channel using live kit or similar other system uh, then it can be of course improved this particular process um, also there are different point of failure that means if any of this particular endpoint uh, fails in the process of the voice ai agent system that means basically your voice ai agent system will not work and i and i think the project that i'm about talking about is actually going to solve all of this problem by actually creating one speech to speech model much like that you have seen in case of openai real time api but you know what openai real time apis was very costly so it was not something that people were able to use and i guess this is where this particular project which which is called ultravox came into picture and they have actually used a lot of the open source project like faster whisper 
like seamless m40 and different llm models and they have basically created a speech to speech model which is again an open source as an open weight model and they have completely removed the need of a separate audio speech recognition system that is required in this particular voice ai agent system what they are doing is basically as i have read a bit about their documents is they are basically taking the voice directly from the users and they are basically keeping it in a multi-dimensional voice embedding to understand the voice intonation the emotions phonetics speech and based on that the agent would respond if you have seen the demo where i have said hey give me some and then i stopped it the agent could have understood immediately that i was not able to uh, tell it properly that what i want and that is where it said that i think you are confused about what to order and then it was able to actually give me all the options so this is what our real life human to human communication works right and this is how we want our voice ai agent to work as well and with this project i think we'll be able to achieve it and again this is the open source project and this project is called ultravox and as they say that it's a new kind of multimodal llm that can understand text as well as human speech without a need of separate asr exactly what i have said in that particular uh, diagram and they use some of the research open source research basically which is this m4t speech gpt and all the others and that and this is where they say that a multimodal projector that converts audio directly into high dimensional space used by llm and they tr use they train their model using llama 3 mistral and gemma which are again open source model and this entire project is mit license that means it is completely open source you are able to actually host their inference server yourself and i'm probably going to create another video later on how to do that this is a completely new project i am also still learning everything that uh, that is there and the community member that i have talked about earlier he has actually sent me about this project about a month back but i saw their documentation was still not ready at that time so i didn't focus on this project much that time and that's why it took some time for me to come up with this particular video with ultravox but i must say that i am quite fascinated about this project because the latency is really, really mind blowing because I have been creating videos about live kit since four or five months back when people were using OpenAI real-time API. And when I use this and I compare with real-time API, this is really, really fast. They have actually said it here that uh, their time to fast token is approximately 150 millisecond and token per second is uh, around 60 using a Llama 3U.1 8 billion backbones, which is really nice. And the best part is you can actually fine tune it. They have some kind of guide somewhere I have seen, which I haven't explored it yet, of course, but here they said how you can train the model as per your requirement. And this is something that I'm definitely gonna explore in future videos. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Okay, so now we will go ahead to the code that I have created. I would rather say I have taken from one of their examples, which is Ultravox WebSocket client example. And then I modified this a bit to the purpose of this particular demo that I have shown you. And I'm going to actually take you through the code, how I have implemented that. So here we are with the code base and this code base has a couple of files which are important. Just let me show you first. One is the WebSocket client.py. This is where the actual agent is running or the client is running and then you have the web app.py which is actually serving the web page that you saw in the demo and the index.html is actually what powering up the ui as well now this project is managed by uv not peep uh, i have started using uv because it's much easier to run using uv as i've found out in recent times and all of the dependencies are managed in this five project uml file so it needs sound device it needs WebSocket and it needs flask to run the web server and numpy and all these modules you will definitely be able to download this entire code from the link below so go to the link download this code and you can also check out all my other projects and apps that i've created in the channel over the past one year again there is a readme which i will update with again step by step how you can run it and uh, before i publish this code before you see this particular video okay quickly go through each of the file one by one so that you understand okay the websocket client is basically the core code where the agent is running again this is not a production ready code please do not use it for your production purpose this is only for demo purpose and the reason is because here in the websocket client we are using 
local sound device and everything to run it locally in my system so that is why we are using sound device for this local audio sync so local audio sync is basically a class that we have defined to produce the output of, from this model like the voice output or speech output then we have local audio source this class is basically used to uh, get the voice input from microphone as you can see it is still ag again using sound device but this is input stream whereas this is output stream and then we have the main voice agent class which is the websocket voice session and this is where we are basically using websocket to connect to the ultravox api okay WebSocket is not one of the ideal uh, protocol that you should use for voice AI agent system. I have talked about this previously uh, many times as part of the WebRTC framework exploration uh, as part of the LiveKit demo. So this is, although a demo project, I'm going to create more tutorial on this particular technology or on this particular project where I will use WebRTC and I'll show you how to do that. But this is the first video in this Ultravox series to give you some idea about this new technology cool now let's go through quickly one by one what is happening so there is a, uh, an init method where we are basically initiating all of the local audio sync and the websocket connection and the way ultravox uh, it works is basically you first have to call this https um, call endpoint and once you call that endpoint it basically give you a wss connection which they call it as join url and then you basically use the join url to uh, talk with their api basically so that works on websocket and that is why we have created this particular class so if we basically take a look from the main method so in the main method we define the ultravox api key how you get the ultravox api key is very simple just go to app ultravox.ai and then here once you go there you will get 30 free minutes uh, once you register you don't have to give any credit card or debit card or anything just go there in the settings and just get generate a new api key and just start use that you don't have to give any card details before you test it and then what you do is set that in your browser or maybe in the code or in a env file whatever suits for you and what this is basically doing in the main method it's just using this websocket client.py which is this file and it's starting up with this particular uh, system prompt and we as part of this demo we have actually added all of the product price and everything in part of the system prompt but in real life you probably will have it in a crm system we can do that later uh, there is also a use case of how to add tools that i'll show you in, in a while now once this main method is started it's basically calling uh, this main method from here if you see it's calling asyncure.run main method so we go to the main method and in the main method it's first calling uh, this get join url method so get join url method is where you call the https endpoint that i have just shown you and you get back the join url as you get the join url then you call the websocket voice connection that the class that i was showing you and pass the particular join url which is a wss url as soon as you do that what it does is basically it initiates everything like your local audio sync and local audio source and everything else and then it starts communicating with the ultravox api basically of course it uses the system from that i have shown you and uh, this is where it actually handled the data that is coming back from the ultravox server uh, this particular client also comes with a tool call example again this tool call is basically a hard-coded value but we can add it or we can replace it with a proper rest api and that's what i'll do probably in the next video when i will talk more about ultravox this is where it's basically just uh, returning a butter pecan ice cream and banana smoothie as a special menu a secret menu if user asks that's what we added as a tool and this tool is basically added uh, with the system prompt when it is sending the request to the ultravox api now again i'm saying this is a project to test everything in your local not something that you should do like in a production system because it's using websocket and websocket is really not something that you should use in a production use case for a voice ai agent system simply because there is a bandwidth constraint and every and many other constraints that is there but this is really good for testing out a model whether that is suitable for your purpose or not now you can actually independently run the websocket client without the ui part if you just run uv run 
web socket client that will run basically. Thank you for calling Dr. Donut. How can I help you today? Hey, I just want to put some donut order. What kind of donuts can I get for you? We've got a variety of flavors. I can suggest our pumpkin spice ice donut or our old fashioned donut. They're both let's pretty pop. Let's, let's order old fashioned donut. I've got an old fashioned donut for you. That's 129. What else can I get for you? Would you like That's to try a drink? My pleasure. So just to confirm, I've got one old fashioned donut for you. That's 129. Would you like to add a drink to your order? No, that's all. Thank you. My pleasure. Your total comes out to be 129. Please drive up to the window to pay and pick up your old fashioned donut. So as you can see, you can actually in independently run the websocket client.py and you'll be able to talk with the agent. And this is how the transcript is coming. But just to show you a better way, uh, I added um, a new UI. Uh, it's just doing nothing. If you see, it's just very simple. I created some app route like a start route. And then there is a normal route where if you go through the slash, if you open localhost 5000 slash, it's basically loading up the index.html that I created. And this index.html is what you see in the demo at the first page. And that's where I have created a microphone button, which is kind of animated. And when you click that microphone button, what it is doing, it's basically calling the start API. And this start API is basically just using a sub process command loading the websocket client.py that means whatever i have run just now that's what it is actually running as a sub process when the start method is being called and then there is a stop method that means if you click the microphone button again it will basically first check if there is any websocket process running that means if there is any sub process running if it is running then it will clean up the process so there is a method that i have introduced here as the cleanup method where it will basically terminate any existing websocket process um other than that i think there is an update state uh, this is what i have introduced into the websocket client to update the state so that you cannot change the ui element a bit as as and when required but again this is kind of optional you may want to have it or you do not want to have it uh, that's absolutely fine and the gate state is also again used by the ui uh, like the, the ist index.html to find out the latest state for example if you double click on the microphone button by mistake it will be able to know that hey your call is already running so that that is where the gate state is uh, basically doing so gate state is basically just going to send you the current state as i said the uf circuit line.py is where the actual uh, agent is running webapp.py is the flask based code where we have just introduced a few of the rest api route and we have the index.html that is calling this particular routes. So again, just download the code, use Ultravox API for free for 30 minutes, test it out. And if you really find it awesome, then maybe just go to their repository and give them a star because they have only got a thousand star there. But this is really, really awesome project in my opinion, which I would really love to explore in the future videos. So again, please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the new videos that will come into this channel on different AI agent and SaaS application. Hey, this is just a quick thing that I forgot to mention in the original video, so I had to record this separately, is that I told you in initially as part of this video about their cost, and I think the Ultravox cost is really, really cheap, as I will just show you quickly. So if you go to their Ultravox AI webpage, you will see that they are only costing around five cents per minute which is really really cheap given that it's a speech to speech model and also they support multilingual they support bring your own model as well they support web rtc and web technology so all of these features i'm again explore in this channel later on and that's what i just wanted to mention in, in this quick snippet of this video and please continue watch the remaining part thank you with that said, I'm going to end this video right here and I really hope you have had some new knowledge or you have had some new value. If yes, don't forget to give a like to this video so that this video reaches out to other wider people and please stay tuned, take care and I'll see you on to the next one. Bye.